Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Okay, so we are basically going to do a little bit. So let's all bring out our notes. It's flipping the view light. It's on, right? Okay, so hello. It's not on. Hello. It's not. So where am I supposed to on it? No, like it's on, like I'll put it on here. Is that what you're using for writing? Is that what you're using for writing? Are you sure that you know not switched and go to that play? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. So today, yesterday we started um, a little bit of introduction as regards to um, the full temperament. And now the whole idea of this class is to be able to enable us have a balance in our personal lives and also as we envision to have a career. Now, many of the people who are already in the university now, let me be sincere with you people, the, most of them, eh, they don't even know why they behave the way they are behaving, right? And because they don't, okay. So because they don't know how um they, they don't know how they are behaving or they don't really know so much about themselves so they don't know how to respond to life generally so your ability to be able to understand what temperament you are in will enable you to be able to have a full grasp as to how to be able to interact with people and to be the best version of yourself so yesterday we started with the four temperament theory which is which we said are the four distinct personality types. And now when we talked about personality, what do we mean by personality? When, so personality is how you behave as a person. So if I come to your class, for instance, now, uh, Sinkebe, and then I come to your class and then I ask your classmate, what can you say about Sinkebe? And your classmates start giving us, and maybe your classmates start telling me things about you. Those things they say about you are your personality, right? So your ability to know where and uh, what kind of personality you have will enable you to leverage um, in your academics. It will know the kind of person you are and then it will help you to leverage on your academics and it will now help you to be able to perform better. And then even the IT world, your ability to understand your temperament will also help you to be able to go to that length of knowing which particular one you're supposed to do. So, yeah. Yes, please. Is there light? There's no light. There's no here. So, yeah, that's been, so today now we are going to be looking at the explanations of all of them. So yeah, the first thing is sanguine temperament. So we said, who are the sanguine? The sanguine are uh, individuals. Uh, they are, um, the sanguine individual are typically outgoing, optimistic, and enthusiastic. So I'm going to break the words into um, so that you can be able to understand. So when we say someone is optimistic, what do we simply mean? The way we say someone is optimistic is that he actually have a positive energy. He think positively towards things, right? Then when we say someone is enthusiastic, what do we simply mean? We say someone who wants to do something, he is eager to do something, right? He always wants to do something. Uh, at any time he's ready to do 
anything you ask the person to do. That's what enthusiastic simply means. Now, they are often the life of the party and enjoy being around people. So if you enjoy being around people, then you are in the sanguine category. They are also creative and expressive. So you just have some kids who are very outspoken. So when you give them the opportunity to talk in crowd, like they are so happy and very, very um, joyful for them to talk in crowd, right? So uh, often finding joy in art, music, and other forms of self-expression. So if you always find, uh, if you are always finding joy in when you are doing art, when you are always doing, when you are doing music, when, and then uh, other forms of self-expression like public speaking and all, then you are likely to be in the sanguine um, category. Do we all understand? Do we all understand? All right. So now we are going to look at some of the characteristics of the sanguine person, all right? So what are some of the characteristics of the sanguine person? Sanguine people are naturally social, enjoying interacting with others and building strong relationships. Then optimistic, they have a positive outlook on life, often seeing the good in every situation. Sanguine are very, very energetic people. So sanguine individuals have high level of energy and enthusiasm, making them exciting to be around people. So. I need you to understand if you are around, I need you to study this and as I'm saying, so that you can be able to know which of the temperament you are in. Do we all understand? Then sanguine persons are very creative. They have vivid imagination and enjoy expressing themselves through various forms of act and creativity. Then we are going to look at some of the advantages of Sanguine. So sanguine person is outgoing and social, enthusiastic and energetic, creative and spontaneous. So uh, you might want to know what spontaneous simply means. Their ability to think on their feet and embrace new experiences. It's one of the what one of the advantages of being a sanguine. Like they are always thinking, okay, what can I do next? What can I do next? Now the next part is the part that you will not like. So let's look at the next part. What is the next part? Sanguine people, they are very disorganized sets of persons. <laughs> like their things are always scattered. If you go to their room, shoe this side, one leg of the shoe is on this side, the other one is on this side, bed unfold, clothes not well properly folded and all. Impulsive. So sanguine may act on impulse without fully considering the consequences which can lead to problems. So when someone asks you what does it mean for someone to be impulsive? Impulsive simply means that you are just doing something without thinking of the consequences. Like you just act. When maybe someone just got you annoyed, you just carry a knife, you want to choke the person. Uh, that is impulsive. You've not even thought of the consequences. Am I might go to jail and all. So those are some of the characteristics of the sanguine, right? Then easily distracted. Yeah, very easily. No, 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 you're reading. No, 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 you have jumped to television. No, 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 you want to eat food. No, no, no. They are never at a particular point. Like they are easily distracted. So that is one of the cars these are the disadvantages of a sanguine person so i as I, I trust that you guys are getting to have the experience so that you can be able to know which of the temperaments you basically fall into so the next one is choleric temperament so who are the choleric people choleric individuals are strong will decisive and action oriented they are natural leaders and often take charge in situations. They can be ambitious and driven, but also prone to impatience and anger if things don't go their way. So the choleric person, they are leaders. When they go to a place, they just want to lead, right? They just want to lead. And they, when you see them, you admire their ability. To, they have this kind of charisma. Do you know what charisma is? Like this, this, uh, they have this charming personality that people are easily attracted to and they can easily convince people to do something. Now, let's look at some of the advantages of 
uh, or some of the characteristics of a let's look at some of the characteristics of a choleric um, person they, are, they are, have the leadership capacity so choleric often take on leadership roles naturally guiding and motivating others so if you always find yourself liking to motivate others you are most likely to be uh, in choleric decisive they make quick decisions and are not afraid to take risks so if you are always scared of taking risks you are not likely to be in um, choleric then independent so chlorics have their independence and prefer to work alone or on their own terms so if you like to work alone then you are most likely to be under chloric okay so let's look at some of the advantages of chloric so we said that they are they have leadership skills decisive goal oriented then I want us to look at basically so I want us to look at basically the disadvantages of chloric um, temperament impulsive and intolerant ah they don't have patience at all like their decisiveness can sometimes come across as impatient or lack of empathy for others perspective so if, when you are in class and you guys are contributing and then the person is not making so much sense right and those are like one of then you you are not patient with the person for you to be able to see that the person shares his idea fully you just cut the person short when he is talking you are not willing to listen to the person till the end of the conversation so you have high tendency of being under chloric then overbearing their strong drive for control and efficiency might lead to conflict or alienation of those who prefer a more collaborative approach then they are overbearing their strong drive for control and efficiency might lead to conflict so they just want to be in charge eh? they just want to be in charge that's for chloric so and most times it can be overbearing do you know what overbearing is you know what the word overbearing when someone is doing too much and you can't take it anymore on the person so you can say that that is overbearing like somebody is doing something and you don't like and now you are fed up with the person right you know what fed up is like you are tired of an a particular person because of how they are behaving so yeah that's what overbearing then stress prune their high standard and ambition can sometimes lead to stress or burnout so that's for the chloric so they are strain stress prone okay so melancholic temperament so melancholic individual are introspective analytical and detail oriented they are often artistic and creative with deep appreciation for beauty they can also be sensitive and emotional sometimes prone to sadness or anxiety so these are the this is so when you are i need you to to pay attention to this they can they are sensitive and emotional sometimes prone to sadness have you met people who are just sad for no reason like they are just sad what's wrong with you nothing did anybody offend you absolutely nothing what are you guys discussing about no, 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 I mean, like, you guys are kind of distracted. I need your full attention here. So, yeah, um, they are prone to sadness or anxiety. Now, they are detail-oriented. So when you are working with a melancholic person, he wants you to do things as it is. So most times, mommies fall under these categories. They want you to be doing their, their things as it is. Sometimes it could be daddy. So... It could be that they want their things to be done in a certain way and you cannot dare change it from how it is supposed to be done. So that is um, the characteristics of a word, a melancholic person. Then let's look at some of their characteristics. So introspective. So let's look at the word, the meaning of the word. They enjoy spending time alone and reflecting on their thoughts and feelings. That's what introspective, intro, intro. So intro is like inner, do you understand? Like inner something. So introspective means that you just enjoy being alone. Uh -huh. So being alone is not 
there is nothing wrong with you when you are always alone. Do we get, do we understand? Uh -huh. It's just a temperament. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. Then artistic, they have a natural appreciation for beauty and also a fine expression through art, music, or writing. So earlier on, we have talked about one. So you see, you can either be, um, you, can, I, you can actually have a combination of sanguine and melancholy because they have like a hand in hand together. So here, you can see the artistic part. If you go to sanguine, you also see artistic, right? Now, so you can have a combination of two, um, two temperaments. So you can have a sand male that is sanguine and melancholy, right? So that this, this is for melancholy. Then they are analytical. So melancholy individuals are good at observing details and thinking critically. So most programmers actually fall under this category. So when you have high level of, um, of when you are very, very good and excellent at observing details and thinking critically, you are most likely to be in melancholy. Then, the disadvantages of melancholy is overly critical. Now, when we say something is critical, what do we mean? When thorough, when we say something is critical, we mean it's thorough. So what is thorough? When you are like very deep, deep, deep things, do we understand? So over, overly critical is you are over being deep. Do we understand the word overly critical now? Do we understand? Do we understand? Yes. Okay. So now, melancholic are pessimistic. They may focus on potential problems or negative outcomes, which can affect their overall outlook and relationships. So pessimistic people like to focus on the problem. Um, I say pessimistic. Yeah, pessimistic people like to focus on the negative part. So there are people when you just share your ideas with them, and they are, all they are telling you is how it is not going to work. So that is what? That is a pessimistic individual. Do we understand? So what is pessimistic? What did I say pessimistic is? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what pessimistic simply means. Now, next one is difficulty with change. Melancholic people, they don't like change at all. <laughs> they like the things they've been doing to remain permanent. So, melancholic might struggle with adapting to new situations or unexpected changes due to their preference for stability and predict predictability. So, they don't like anything that has to do with change. They like to be, they like to be the way they are for a long period of time. So that's like the characteristic of a pessimist. Okay, so phlegmatic temperament. So phlegmatic individuals are calm, peaceful, and easygoing. They are often good listeners and mediators, preferring harmony and stability. They are also practical and reliable, often taking a measured and thoughtful approach to life. So they are very calm individual. So um, these are the characteristics of the people who are um, phlegmatic. They are very calm. So when you see someone who is very calm, he is in phlegmatic very peaceful, they don't used to fight anybody. They are very practical, they are grounded and focused on practical matters. Reliable, phlegmatic individuals are trustworthy and dependable. Okay, so disadvantages of phlegmatic individual. Avoidant, the desire to avoid conflict. Their desire to avoid conflict can sometimes lead to passivity or avoidance of important issues, right? So procrastination, they may struggle with motivation and can be prone to delaying tasks or decisions. Okay, do we all understand now? 
So avoid that. They don't any, any when you are looking for their trouble, they are not going to even come close to you and all. So procrastination, they may struggle with much, so most times they like to avoid anything that is going to procrastination, they like to procrastinate things a lot. Okay, so um So now the whole idea why we've had this class is so that you can be able to understand yourself better and how you can be able to react to so that you can be able to respond to life and not react to life. So what's the difference between responding to life and reacting to life? Responding to life is that you are clear with your decisions and you are taking them with precision. Now, when, what I mean, what I simply mean is that maybe someone comes to you and he starts talking to you anyhow in the way you don't want. So you don't just go and start fighting the person because you now understand that my temperament is sanguine, right? And because I am sanguine, I am most likely to get angry and I could easily get into fight. So if someone is coming at you and he wants to fight you, you now can be able to stay back because you know that you can do like the most dangerous thing at this particular point, right? So you are able to, to stay back because you know yourself. Then if you are melancholy, for instance, that like to overthink things, you will always avoid conversations that will always lower your self-esteem. We all know what self-esteem is, how you think about yourself, how you see yourself to be. That's what self-esteem simply means. Now, how is this even related to coding? Now, some of you have come here and started doing Python and game and all. So it's not all of you that are going to end up as Python programmers. Some of you might end up as product designers. Some of you might end up as uh, data analysts. Some of you might end up as backend developers and all. So having put all of these things together, you can now be able to understand that life is not about reaction. So I was, I talked, about, I have explained what respond simply means. So let me talk about react. So react is anything that comes to you, you just give it back to life like that, which at the end of the day will put you in so much trouble because your actions and your steps are not being calculated. Okay. So having explained all of these things, um, which of the temperament do you think you are? So there is sanguine, there is chloric, there is melancholy. You can sit down. Pragmatic. Pragmatic. Okay. That is this one. So they are calm, easygoing. They are often the peacemakers of the group, preferring harmony and stability. Yeah, Sinkebe. Sanguine. You are sanguine. How can you be sanguine and you are seeing sanguine? They are usually very expressive individuals. Okay, so let's keep it. Which one do you think? You can actually combine two. Hi, Moni, how are you? You can actually combine two together. So. Sanguine and melancholy. Okay. Sanguine and phlegmatic. Yeah, you can. So which one? Sanguine and phlegmatic. Sanguine and phlegmatic. Okay. Um, so you can combine two. Which two do you think you are? Sanguine and chloric. Sanguine and chloric. Okay, you guys are not even here. Don't worry, I'll send the link because the class is actually pre -rec. The class is actually pre-recorded, so you guys are going to get them. I'll, I'll send you the link, so you'll be able to get it. No problem. Okay, we are done.